Hello folks and welcome back to Whiskey Wars. My name is Sean and tonight we will finally be reviewing Woodford Double Oak. Kind of forgot about this one. Let's get into it. So here is our bottle for this evening. At long last, we're finally reviewing Woodford Double Oak. This is one of those bottles that I thought that I had reviewed, but uh, ends up, no, I have not. So uh, yeah, now we're doing it, finally. Uh, anyway, here we go, let's get into this thing. You know, uh, if you want the history of Woodford, I have another video that covers that pretty thoroughly. Uh, but the short of it is that the distillery that is Woodford now was many other things before it became Woodford. Changed hands a lot, changed names a lot, a lot of famous people involved along the way. And then finally, Sazerac, Buffalo Trace's parent company came along and bought them up. And then they finally became Woodford and all the stuff that we know and love today came about. And you know, and now they're even the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. And that finally brings us to this guy right here, Woodford Double Oak. And you know, Double Oaks, Toasted Barrels, all those kind of things have become pretty popular in recent times. This is technically a finished bourbon, although, I, I mean, it's not finished in the sense that it's put into something completely different that gives it this new flavor. It's just put into a second barrel. So there, you're not, it's not like a wine finished or scotch or rum or something like that. It's just uh, put into a second barrel that's also either toasted or charred. And that's how we get the deeper, richer tones that we're about to smell and taste. So let's talk about that. Here we go. First off, oh man. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, this is a store pick. See that there? Come on camera, you can do it. Focus up there. Yeah, so gonna be a little bit different than your standard Woodford Double Oak. And we'll talk about that more as we go through the different nosing and tasting notes. What is different about it? Oh, nice coffee note, nice dark chocolate, really nice dark chocolate note. Uh, like a nice sweet black cherry in there. Almost like a, like a black cherry cobbler kind of thing going on. There's certainly some pastry notes there. A little bit of a strawberry as well. Man, that really nice, really nice tobacco note. And it's a really sweet tobacco. Very, th this whole palette is very jam, jelly, candy. The, there is certainly a woodiness there, but it, the most prominent notes are just sweet, fruity, kind of candy notes. Man, and, and lots of dark fruit. So you're getting that roasted date, my favorite note of all. Uh, you're getting uh, kind of a, a sweet, really sweet plum note, like a super ripe sweet plum, a little strawberry there. Uh, there there's a, a creaminess going on here that's, that's really nice. Almost like a, like a nice high quality milk chocolate. Yeah. Excellent nose. Uh, certainly got a little bit of char going on there as I kind of pulled my nose away. Yeah, very nice nose. Let's get into the sip though. Okay, so up front, those fruit notes really come across. Very nice and sweet. Strawberry, date, uh, certainly a plum note in there. There's maybe even like a blackberry, but it's a, like a super ripe, not sour blackberry, but it's kind of there. Also that chocolate note is definitely in there, kind of mixing up in there. And, and then those toasty oak notes are just saturated throughout all that. So imagine all those fruits, maybe kind of toasted, roasted over a fire, uh, something like that, kind of all pairing together. There's also this nice kind of coffee note blended in there as well. Uh, really nice palette. Uh, let's, let's go in for one more sip here though and talk about this finish. All right, folks, before we get into this second sip and talk about that finish that is fantastic, I just want to remind folks that we do have a Patreon. And so if you want to support the channel directly and also get the benefits of our Patreon, then please check that out. You can get in for as little as $2 a month, but $5 is where you really start to get some nice benefits. So check that out if that's something you would like to do. And uh, one of those benefits is samples from me. So you get to try all the stuff that's around me here. So if that appeals to you, then please check that out. Now let's talk about these tasting notes. 
So something to mention, the palette's very soft because this is 90.4 as all Woodford stuff is, well, not all, but most Woodford stuff is that 90.4, which is an odd proof point, but that's kind of Woodford's calling card. Uh, right before you swallow though, so before you get to the finish, back of the palette, there's this brief moment of sharpness. It's kind of a brief ethanol punch. It's kind of like this ethanol and bright cherry note that pops up real quick. And then, at least in this uh, store pick, and the nice thing is, is that the finish makes up for that kind of brief moment of lack in quality. So the finish on this particular store pick, anyway, is really, I mean, just it's, it's one of the nicest coffee notes I've ever come across, especially in a low proof bourbon. Now here though is kind of the caveat. I don't find that very much in standard Woodford. To me, actually, standard Woodford can be a little bit too overly sweet. Uh, I actually prefer picks generally, especially if it's from a store that I know does good picks. So I certainly recommend finding Woodford picks if you can find them. Now, a lot of people really love the standard Woodford Double Oak offering, and I really enjoy it. It's just, I don't like them as much as the picks, and I know that's kind of putting you guys in a weird space because you're like, well, I can't get this pick, and I understand that, but I'm just saying, if you see picks, they're worth a pickup because, especially if for you, like myself, Woodford Double Oak comes across as too sweet. It's, it's almost like kind of sickeningly sweet sometimes. You can get like too candied, too fruity, like way too sweet jam, something like that. And this kind of tones that down some and you get some of the darker notes that I really enjoy, like that coffee, that dark chocolate. There's kind of those mocha notes, especially on the finish and that nice deep toast, uh, toasted barrel char note. Uh, all that going on in the finish. This this bottle has one of my favorite finishes of a bottle under 100 proof. It's just excellent to me. Now, score though. I'm not going to score this bottle because you guys can't find this bottle. So I'm going to score the standard Woodford. And I've tried it many times. I know the profile basically by heart because I've went through many bottles. Uh, that and 1910 are some of my favorite bottles that I drink way too often probably. Um, so I don't think that the standard offering is quite as good as this, but it's, it is similar. So score on it. Let's talk about it. So I'm going to go a 7.9. So certainly in the upper tier of those, uh, bourbons in the kind of 50 ish dollar bracket there, and certainly worth a pickup, especially if you've never tried it. I think probably most of you have, but if you haven't definitely a pickup and you know i think it's kind of fun to compare woodford double oak and old forester 1910 i think they're both excellent both kind of going after the similar profile but in slightly different ways so go ahead and compare them for yourself and also go out and try this bottle if you have not uh, lastly folks if you enjoyed this if it helps you when you're out looking for new stuff to try please hit that like button and also here's other reviews from us right here and here is the subscribe button so please do that and until next time folks just remember you can never have too much good whiskey